Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media and for today's video we have a special collaboration with Creating with Jovi, Scrapbooks and Memories and Black Whisper Crafts aka Bex which is the hashtag Gothic Girls Collab. Uh, there are 21 of us in total that are doing a project using a kit created by creating with Jovi, Jovi creating which is on her Etsy site and then on her Facebook page there are three pages of freebies and you can find all the information down in the description box as well as all the other people in the collaboration. I have decided after you know going through a uh, 50 different ideas in my head. I want to do a, a journal page, uh, art journal page. I'm going to do an art journal page. Um, so if I'm going to be using wet mediums with these pages that I have printed on my inkjet printer, I need to protect them. So on these two, I have a coat of clear gesso. And on this one, I did a coat of, uh, so this is a clear gesso. You don't want to use a textured gesso on your gel plate. I use the gel plate because if I do the wet on these, it's probably going to smear. And then I did golden gel matte medium. Any gel matte medium would work on this. And we'll see which one works better. All right, I want to start. No one likes to start with a blank page, right? So I'm just going to use a damask stamp in the back and kind of make a pattern with that. And I have figured out a good way to use my stamp to get a fairly consistent pattern. Um, I'm going to kind of put that so the five's in the middle. So I'm just going to go at the, at the one and the five and the nine. I don't need this to be perfect, it's background, but it does help me break the page. Just putting some stamping down helps, helps to break the page. So I had this centered with the five, so I'm just going to kind of do that. And then here I'm going to go um, one. Oh, I had that centered with the five in the middle. <laughs> Duh. And then um, I want to go with the three this time. Three and seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, that one will be over there. And then I'm just going to do that again here. I'm just going to come right to the tips of those tops, center at the five, and then again do the one. You don't have to do this. It's going to be background. It really does not have to be this perfect. Uh, but I kind of want that wallpaper look. And uh, this is kind of thick paper, unfortunately. But I'm just kind of starting with some background. So we might have like layers of wallpaper on an old mansion that is coming apart. And uh, you need gold. You can use glue. I'm going to use this. Uh, gel matte medium which is basically glue and uh, oh and I used permanent ink when I laid that down but I didn't let it dry so it's moving also my brush oh, that needs to be thicker <laughs> so let's maybe put some on the back this is thicker paper like I said I could use um it's a lot of I probably wouldn't use the glue stick for this just because you want your stuff to you know you get a lot of wet mediums it's gonna happen and I guess if I'm gonna do this with all my layers I didn't really have to do all the other prep um, of course I didn't know that I'd be able to actually brush it on and you need to check with your papers because some printers it might run if you brush the medium on there and you might want to use your you know if you have a gel plate that's a good thing to use a gel plate for if you don't have a gel plate and you want to be able to get your medium on there without rubbing it on you could try like a silicone baking mat or um, something like that just something that you can put the the medium on and then pick up 
onto the paper without rubbing it. And then, so I'm just adding layers right now in the background and then I will, with some collage, and then I will add some paints, inks, stenciling, stamping, I don't know, whatever, whatever my brain decides it wants to do. I don't even know which girl I'm using yet. When I decide, when I'm ready to figure out my colors, that's when I will probably go ahead and just add a little bit of mark making. This needs to dry. Just adding some marks in the background. They don't have to be like that. They could, it's still wet. I need to dry it. They could even just, anything, anything you want to do in the background. Maybe some kids color it on the wallpaper. I gotta dry this before I start adding more mediums. So I'm gonna use my heat gun to dry it. If you are new to mixed media and you're wondering what is she keeps talking about mediums and media, what is she talking about? Mediums are like acrylic paint, oil paint, watercolor paint, paint pens, inks, dyes, uh, acrylic ink. I use Liquitex. Um, you can use anything. I'm just gonna use a palette knife and just kinda blur some of these lines here. You could use your finger. You could use a credit card just to put the gesso on. Gesso is just a primer. People who have been watching my videos lately know that because I've said it in like every video where I've used it. <laughs> um, if you ever see like a canvas in a store and it's like white, it's because they've primed it with gesso. It's a little bit more chalky than paint, a little bit more transparent than most paints, like than like a regular white acrylic paint. But you don't have to have gesso. Um, it also takes inks and whatnot a little bit differently than like an, a plasticky acrylic paint. So that's, that's another nice thing about it. All right, now I need to figure out colors that I want to use. I definitely want to use like this color here, which for me is a paint like a paints gray, like with blue in it. So like the golden paints gray, you don't have to get golden paints. You use whatever paints you want when you are making art. Use what you have, um, you know, just whatever colors you have. So I definitely want to use some paints gray and I'm thinking maybe this like red, red. So maybe I'll even use her in this one because her whole hat is here. And then we can use a little bit of quinacridone nickel azo gold as well. So like those would be my three main colors would be the Payne's gray, that uh, scarlet red, and a little bit deeper orange than that. But that's all right. I can always adjust that a little bit with some um, colored pencils, another medium. Crayons, another medium. So um, I've got uh, this paint, which is crimson red which is just gonna kind of just give me a background of the red. Cause when I put the Payne's gray on there, it will kind of change that red a little bit, darken it up, probably purple it up a little bit. Oh, it's a lot more red than I was planning to use, but that's all right. We'll add some gesso if we need to. And it's on there now. And then I have this paper underneath, which I just call drop paper. And it just takes, see, that's what I would have rather had. But I didn't hold my wedge right. This is a catalyst wedge. You don't have to have a catalyst wedge to do art. But you can get some fun technique things with it like that, which is what I would have liked here. But that's okay. I'm going to dry this with my heat gun again. It's a little tacky, kind of dry to the touch. You can start seeing some of the textures from the paper and the gesso that was scraped on. Um, no, I don't have a thicker one of this. Uh, I just have the li the fluid acrylic. I don't probably need that much. Uh, this time I think I will just use my brayer maybe. It's really gonna darken it up a lot. I don't wanna cover it. That's probably good. If you want a burnt orange and you don't have uh, the quinacridone nickel azo gold, which, you know, we all love, uh, you could take a bright orange, potentially, <laughs> and a little bit of blue, which is opposite on the color wheel. This is should be Prussian blue. And mix that up, and that should mute down your orange a lot so that you have more of a... I need a little bit more orange. I might have got a little too much blue in there. 
I still want it to look orange, but I, I want it more of a, a rusty burnt orange. You know what I mean? So yeah, if you're new, that is one way to have some more brown. Maybe do this on a plastic palette so you don't lose half your paint to the paper because it absorbs into the paper that I have it on. And just keep playing with it until you get the color you want. Actually, I don't mind that. Um, it's a little bit more brown than orange. I could keep adding orange, but um, I don't mind that. And it looks a little poopy next to the blue, but it's okay. We're going to go with it. <laughs> just... Oh, and if you're smart, unlike me, you would put some paper behind your pages so you don't ruin your other pages. Which those pages back there aren't done yet, but like these over here are done. And maybe, just maybe. All right. I'm putting this on a little bit thick and then I'm going to take out and I'm just going to press this down so that this paint will have some texture to it. That's one way to add some texture to your paint and then either let it dry or dry it. Hello in here, but the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold is closer to that more orangey than what I did, um, but that's okay. This is still going to work. And now I'm going to bring in a little bit more gesso because that's what you do, layers. Sometimes you just, if you want to push something back a little bit, you might want to use that for layers. Also, I'm going to bring in a stencil. You would think I'd bring in one of mine, but I don't have like a, ooh, I think this would be perfect. This is just an Amazon, oh my goodness, stencil. Um, and I just kind of want to do like this little, it's almost like iron So I'm just going to bring in the gesso. It's just going to be really faint because, like I said, gesso is a little bit more transparent. Maybe gesso is not what I want. Let's try some buttermilk. It's kind of thin, so I definitely want to take it off the sponge. It'll definitely be thicker. That's okay. Gray would have been good too, but... I want to add some brightness back, even though they're goth girls. It'll be a goth girl and, and a couple friends is what will end up probably on this page. So there is over there. And it pushes back some of that brown that wasn't quite as orange as I wanted. So that's what it looks like now. I know, kind of looks like a hot mess. Um, but that's okay, because that is just the background. Let me cut out my girl. And now I see that my red back here is a little too bright. I want it to be a little darker like that. Which if I could find my permanent maroon, I would use that. But since I can't, I'm just gonna use this with a little bit of um, black paint in it. All right, I'm gonna, this time I'm going to put the black over here. Whoops, that's more than I need. That's why I put it over there. So that I can mix it. I don't want to mix it. Okay. Then I can just put a little bit of black at a time. Until I get the, the depth that I want. Because, you know, that red is just too bright that I had on there. That's another way to just darken up. You can add black, brown, but really, if you want to get a muted color, which is sort of what a burgundy is, I would add a little bit of green would do that too. But there's usually some green in black, so that also, oh yeah, that's much better. I'm going to bring some of the damask back in. But I'm going to be a little bit more random with it. But 
but it, and it'll bring some texture because it's you know the paint is a little bit thicker so there we go and I'm gonna go wash that and I'm gonna scrape that into my other book if you don't have easy access to a bathroom like I do um, and you want to use acrylic paints with your stamps you can always just have like a wet paper towel next to you next to your work surface to keep the paint wet until you can wash it but always wash it um, you know get that paint off or it's going to affect your stamps especially um, your foam stamps the rubber stamps you can eventually get it off with some Murphy's oil soap if you soak it okay so I have this red flower that I want to get closer to this color so I'm going to use this quinacridone violet and um, hope that it doesn't craze it was separating and crazing there I want it oh, oh I got way too much on there I want a very thin layer but we have a hair on there but I don't want it I gotta get it before it starts crazing basically and I don't mind that it's a little bit lighter in some spots. That's closer to the color I want. Uh, I want to cover her um, pumpkin. So I think the one big flower there will hopefully work. I don't know what we'll do. Oh, well, maybe that. Oh, yeah, that might work. All right, I'm going to glue those on. All right, I'm going to do something a little off and weird. And Well, it might not make sense. It might not look good. But if you don't try stuff, you don't know. So I'm just going to take some of this fluid acrylic that I just used on the roses. And I got way too much, so I'm going to take some of it off. <laughs> just like that. Hope that dries. Um, and then I'm going to spray it with some water and just let it drip down the page. Which is going to change everything. And also make it a little bit less busy. I don't hate it. It's a little too pinky purple though. So um, black marble. That's what I've got. I'm going to spray some of that in there. And also just kind of let it drip around. It's making a mess in my whole book. That's that's what you get in your art journal sometimes. You just get a big freaking mess. That's why I buy Viva. Viva Las Vegas. Um, and just kind of, well it does have a little bit of a pattern, but it's just a little swirly pattern. Just going to pull some of that up. Because it was really, it was like a puddle, basically. And I think I accomplished what I wanted. That will dry lighter. Don't worry. Are you worried? Don't worry. So that's what the background looks like now. It's a little bit more unified um, by adding all that spray. I know it seemed like a crazy choice. And also her face got a little bit of spray on it. We're going with it. We're, we're going to be okay with it. All right. Um, since I got a little bit of spray on her, oops, I kind of want some on him, but not that much. There, we got a little bit and a little bit of paint because, you know, that's what we do. All right, I'm going to dry those splatters and glue them down like this, I think. I like how her hat kind of comes into there. So right now, I'm outlining her with this Stabilo uh, silver pen. And as I do it, I'm just coming through and just kind of pushing it out like that. So it kind of gives her a little bit of a, a glow, like an ethereal glow kind of a thing. You got to do it before it dries, though. So you kind of want to... Be quick about it so don't do a really long line the shorter the line you do the more glow you get So now she stands out more. I like that. She's got a, her her hat here it has kind of like a, a web kind of a thing happening. So I'm going to find a black pen. So or probably an acrylic pen would be good because it would show up better. 
acrylic marker pen it has acrylic paint in it actually i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start by putting the webs in with the the metallic and then go over it with black so that there ends up being kind of a glow behind it and i don't know if you remember from elementary school i don't know if i remember from elementary school how to do a spider web but uh we'll see but you know you draw your lines and then I won't be able to draw perfectly over that with the uh, black. I know that because my hands aren't that good. Um, so yeah, you just keep doing that till you get. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think spiders are probably the best at this. You could even just do this. You don't have to. In fact, I like it like this better, more imperfect. Because we want spooky spider webs, not perfect spider webs. So I'm going to finish that up and I'll be right back. You want it to dry before you try to do anything with it. I had blotted it and thought it was dry. It was not dry. Um, so I was taking this pumice stone and kind of like going over it. And um, I lost all my lines. But that's okay. I'm going to go back over it with black. Which will give it a glow. Now it'll have more of a glow. More of a glow than I really wanted. <laughs> and here it is finished. I should put a third thing. Well, I've got one, two, three. There's my three. The red, the roses are the three. And then this balances off of here. Uh, she's got some whiteness in her face. There's whiteness around the cat. I don't know. It's really dark. There's a little bit of cream here and there. I don't know. I like it. I think it worked out. I may do another one before the month is over. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this page. And keep watching the collab. Have a great day. Have a delightful day, guys. Love you.